Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knots Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knots Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we are going to be making the Pixie Dipped Cardigan. Now this cardigan is in adult sizes, running all the way from small to 5X and can also be made for men. Now this cardigan also comes in child sizes, um, child sizes from the toddlers all the way through youth. And I'll go ahead and leave that video in the description box below as well as the written pattern. This cardigan is worked from the bottom down and it's worked in a way to make it look as though it's dipped. So as we get to the part in the pattern where you can choose to make it dipped or not, um, there will be several photos here to show you that how it looks, whether it's dipped, a color changing, a solid color, whatever is your ideal look, you can go for that look. So today we're gonna be working the adult sizes. I'm going to be making a very small cardigan just to show you exactly what is needing to happen. You'll need approximately one third of your yarn to be the dipped color, so color B, not the main color. This cardigan is worked in a four weight yarn. The one that you're seeing here, I used Lamia Wool Easy. Now it's super simple. This is just made with the blanket stitch, which is single crochets and double crochets staggering each other essentially. And then you get this nice textured look as well. You'll be needing a four weight yarn as well as a six millimeter hook. The yardage that you are going to need is going to vary depending on the length that you work. So the length, the yarn amounts are an average amount, an approximate amount. Okay, so the way that we are going to work this pattern is we are going to be working from the bottom up. So your starting chain is going to be the bottom of your entire body. So the front and the back. We'll then work our rectangle. And as you get higher, when you get to a certain point, this is going to be the length underneath your armpit. And then we'll split the panel into three. So this is what you are going to be looking like. This is going to be an open space for your arms. And then you'll, so we're working back and forth this way. And then once you get to where the arm splits will be, you'll have your front panel, your back panel, and your front panel. Okay, and those will be worked separately so these are split. And then we will fold it over. Each of your panels will be folded over and then we'll seam them at the shoulders. So that will then, this is my front panel that will be folded over and then it'll be seamed at the shoulders to close them up. You'll see a little bit better when I make the smaller swatch. I'm not going to make a full size one because I feel like it actually takes away from what you can see in the entire project. And it's a little bit easier to see if you see the entire thing. So the yarn that I'm going to be using today is just some scrap yarn that I have. This is Karen One Pound and we are going to be using a six millimeter hook. Now before I get started with our chains, I just wanna let you know that if you are really uh, certain on counting your stitches and you need stitch counts throughout this project, you are gonna to have to go down below into the description box and get the written pattern. I'm not gonna give full stitch counts in this project other than where you're starting and stopping. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with a slip knot. Now, our, the first thing we're going to do is chain, and then we're going to do two rows of half double crochet. Now, in lieu of the chain and the first row of half double crochet, you can choose to just do a foundation half double crochet row and then half double crochet on top of that. That's your choice. You can decide if that's easiest for you. 
your starting chain, I will go ahead and leave scrolling on the screen for the size that you want as far as the starting chain that you are going to need. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work my starting chain. Okay, so I have my starting chain and now we are going to half double crochet into the second chain from the hook all the way down to the end of the row. The color that you are starting with, if you want a dipped look in your cardigan, you are going to be starting with your dipped color, your color B, not your main color. Okay, so once we've gotten to the end of our row, we are going to chain one, turn our work, and now we're gonna work one more row of half double crochets. All right, so go ahead and finish out that row, and I will meet you back to show you how to get started on the repeat row. Okay, so we've got our two rows of half double crochet. Now we're gonna continue on. Our third row is going to be our repeat row. We're gonna work this repeat row all the way for your desired length until approximately three inches underneath your armpit, and then we'll split them to start the panels, okay? Now if you are using two colors and you are working this dipped, what you're gonna do is with this same color, you're gonna do six rows six rows of this same color, and then we're gonna start incorporating the main color of the body. So then you'll do one row of the main color. And then from our six rows, it's gonna to move to five, and then you'll have two colors of the main body. So this is a little bit hard to explain, but essentially you're going uh, six rows of the dipped, one of the main, five rows of the dipped, two of the main. So as your dipped color, you are slowly incorporating your main color with one extra row each time as you are decreasing one row of your dipped color all the way till you have one row left and then the rest of it will just be the main color, okay? Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. The written pattern will be linked below in the description box if you need this all written out, all right? So row three, what we're gonna do is chain two. Now this chain two does count as a stitch here and throughout. Now we're gonna turn our work and we are going to place two double crochets right into this first stitch. Now we're gonna skip two stitches, single crochet into the next, and two double crochets into the same stitch. And this is your repeat. Skip two stitches, single, one single crochet, and two double crochets, oops, right into the same stitch. And that's it. Skip two stitches, single crochet, and two double crochets. You're gonna do that all the way until you get to the end of the row. Now the last stitch in your row should just be a single crochet. We're not adding the two double crochets.
Okay, so here I am at the end of the row. I'm skipping two stitches and my last stitch is gonna be a single crochet. Now we're gonna turn our work and we're going to repeat row three all over again, okay? So chain two, two double crochets into the first stitch. Skip two stitches, single crochet, and two double crochets into the next. And that's your repeat, remember? Skip two stitches, single crochet, and two double crochets into the next. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out this row. When you get to the end, remember that your initial two chains does count as a stitch and that's where your single crochets should go. So let me get to that and I'll show you the easiest way to do it instead of trying to work into the second chain. Okay, so here I am at the end, skipping two stitches and single crocheting into the last stitch is my chain two. Now I did find it easier to actually crochet into the space that is between your double crochet and your chain two. And just like that. Okay, so you are going to continue to repeat that row three approximately 22 inches-ish or until the desired length. You are going to wanna to stop when you are about approximately three inches underneath your armpit, and then we will split the panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and work mine until it's a little bit longer and then I will come back and I'll show you exactly where to mark and how we're going to split our panels. Okay, so here is the body of my sweater and now I'm getting ready to split into one front panel, one back panel, and then the next front panel. So we're gonna work these separately in three different pieces. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two stitch markers, okay? Now I'm gonna leave scrolling on the screen the amount of stitches that you'll count in from each side. Remember that your chain two does count as a stitch, okay? So depending on the size you're working is the amount of stitches that you're going to count in. So if you're counting your stitches correctly, your stitch marker should fall into a single crochet. So now we're going to work three separate panels. You have your front panel, your back panel, and then your other front panel right on the other side. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your yarn and you're going to work the regular pattern that we've been doing for the entire body, we're going to work that up to the stitch marker. Now when you get to your stitch marker, your last stitch again is gonna be a single crochet. Then you're gonna turn your work and continue working this panel. So the amount of rows that you're going to need to be doing going up to create the slits for your armhole, I will also leave that on the screen so you know exactly how many rows to work in your height. So when you finish your first front panel, you're going to attach your yarn at the stitch marker, chain your two, and then work your two double crochets into that stitch, working it over and then stopping with your last single crochet into the next stitch marker. So your front panel and your back panel here, they are going to be starting well, this one's going to be ending and then this one's going to be starting in the same stitch okay and then you'll do the same thing for this side so depending on how many rows you needed to work up 
Go ahead and finish that out. And then work the middle part of your back panel, the amount of rows, and then join your yarn here and work the rest of the amount of your front panel here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my rows into each space. And then I will meet you back here to show you how we're going to seam up the shoulders to create our sweater. And then we'll begin the arms after we seam up our shoulders, okay? So work your rows in your three separate panels and I will be back once I have worked mine and we will get started on the next step. Okay, so here is what your cardigan should look like. You should have separated pieces for the front, the back panel, and the other front panel. So now what you're gonna do is fold those panels over and here's what it should look like. So what we're gonna do is take a yarning needle and we are going to seam up the top of our shoulders. Now, I prefer the whip stitch. If you have another method that you prefer to seam up, go ahead and do that, whatever is going to be the easiest for you. one and now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side Okay, so now that we have our shoulders seamed up, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our arms. So we can remove our stitch markers, of course. And what I'm gonna do is actually join my yarn to this tail end, and I'm just gonna join it and use a magic knot. So that way I have one less end to weave in. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna half double crochet into the side of each row. Every two rows, you should have three half double crochets. So you'll have one half double crochet in the side of your single crochet, and then you'll have two half double crochets into the side of your chain two. So we are just going to be working that all the way around until we get to the bottom or back to the bottom where the armpit is. Okay, so now that we have worked all the way around and we are back to the bottom, so what we're gonna do here now is begin a decrease. We're gonna be working this in continuous rounds and every time we get to where our stitch marker is, we're gonna use a stitch marker, we're gonna put a decrease. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna half double crochet two together. So we're gonna go into the next stitch and pull up a loop. From there, we're gonna go straight into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then complete our half double crochet. Now we're gonna place our stitch marker into that decrease. You're gonna work your half double crochets all the way around. 
until we get back to the stitch marker. Okay, so now that we're at the stitch marker, we're going to work our half double crochet decrease again. The first one is going to be where the stitch is marked, and then the next stitch. Complete your half double crochet and move your stitch marker up. Now you're going to continue working this until you have approximately 35 stitches around in your arm, and then you will stop decreasing. You will just continue to work around and around and around. Remember, we're in continuous rounds. We are not slip stitching to join and then start in the next round. We're just going and going around and around. So it's gonna be pretty seamless. Back to our stitch marker. and then replace the stitch marker into that spot, okay? So you're gonna continue working that until you have approximately 35 stitches around as because you're decreasing and then you'll stop decreasing and just continue going. Now what's gonna happen with as we're working in our rounds and we're just doing a decrease, this is the way that our seam is gonna look. So it's mostly hidden, it's still there. And then you can tell that I stopped decreasing right here. And then just continued to work in continuous rounds. And when you get to the length that you want, I made mine a little bit longer because I like the cuff. So when you get to the length that you want, you're gonna do two single crochets and then slip stitch twice. And that's gonna help us to more seamlessly end two single crochets and then slip stitch twice so i'm going to go ahead and finish out this little arm and then i'm going to show you how we're going to do the border so the border is going to go up one side around the back and down the other side so i'm going to finish this arm i'll do this arm and then we'll come back and do the border together Okay, I have my arms done on my cute little doll sweater. And now the last thing we're gonna do before we weave in all our ends is to work the border. So the border here is going to be worked from the bottom of your sweater all the way up around the back of the neck and down the other side, okay? So we are going to join our yarn right here where our tail is, okay? Now again, I'm just gonna do the magic knot so I have one less end to weave in. Pull up a loop and chain one. We're gonna put one half double crochet into the side of each of your half double crochet rows. Now we have a single crochet and then chain two. Single crochet and chain two because we're working the sides of the rows. So we're gonna have one half, just like the arms, one half double crochet into your single and then two over your chain two. And we're gonna work that all the way up to the top of the neck. Okay, so now that we have gotten to where the back of the neck is here, we're gonna work one half double crochet into each stitch along the back, and then again, working it down the side. So go ahead and finish that out and I'll meet you right back down on this side. Okay, so I've made it down to the other side. I've chained one and now I'm going to turn my work and we're gonna work the same thing up and back down the other side, okay? So you're gonna do that anywhere from five to seven rows. I made mine 
one, two, three, four, five rows wide. You can make it wider if you like, or thinner if you like. That's the, you know, your personal preference and how you want to customize that. So because this one is just so tiny, I'm just going to do two rows. And then I'm going to finish this out and, I don't know, find a doll <laughs> that my daughter has. And hopefully it will fit her. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Jolie Knott's Crochet. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for purchasing my patterns. I appreciate all of the love and support that you guys are giving me. And we will see you next time. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram under Jolie Knott's Crochet. You can also join the Jolie Knott's Crochet community group on Facebook and show us what you've created.